Welcome back, and or welcome maybe for the first time. I'm Yvetta. I'm Josh. We'll be continuing our series into the famous last words. And before we jump in, I'm going to start us off in prayer. Uh, Father God, oh gracious, precious God, we just thank you once again for just bringing us here, Father. We pray that your words all spring to them like rain falling from the clouds, Father God. We pray that we you know, draw someone attention with your teaching, Lord, and that we just bless someone. If not many, one is fine with us, Lord. I pray that you just continue to be with us through these days, Father God. Continue to show us your love, your blessing, your care, and who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So have you ever asked yourself, like, um, or kind of thought of a situation where you just kind of felt like it's not fair? Yeah? Life. Life. life in general. <laughs> what Sometimes. about you? What, have you ever thought about time like maybe where your parents, you're like the oldest sibling and your parents um, let your younger siblings get away with a whole lot more um, than you and you feel like saying like, it's just not fair, you know, or you want to go out because it's the weekend and your parents say, no, not this weekend because you went out last weekend. <laughs> like that I makes sense. It doesn't make a difference. Right. <laughs> That's not fair. Mm -hmm. Or even if like um, you and your friend have the same teacher, like the same math teacher. Um, oh no, are both of y'all taking the same subject mm -hmm. and y'all have two different teachers. And one teacher gives you enough homework that lasts you all weekend, and the other teacher, you know, you're done in like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like not fair, right? Um, or like you play basketball on a team and you're not on the starting lineup. You finally get in the game. You only play for like maybe three minutes, and then they put you back on the bench. Like another time, we can say like it's not fair. I don't understand. Right? It. So there's a lot of times in life where we feel like things are not fair. Just take a minute and think about some things that's going on in your life right now where you feel like it's not fair. Maybe being stuck in lockdown for two weeks in Orlando or Orange <laughs> County while the rest of the country roams around freely. Maybe not fair. Like So just kind of pause and think what maybe you are kind of thinking is not fair. I want you to have a good grasp of what you think of as fair and not fair. And you know what? We approach life as if there's two sides battling on what is unfair and not fair. And I got a couple of examples, you know, just like Yvetta said about certain family members, you know, being the oldest and then the youngest being com treated completely different, especially things like staying out late, hanging out with a certain person. You know, you get either your phone taken away, no social media time, you can't go outside, you can't see old bestie. You know, you stuck in the room while old sister's laughing at you, pick on you. That, I mean, I grew up encountering that all my life pretty much. I'm the middle child, so it's, I'm super, super used for it. You know, we truly believe that, you know, we like it when people get what they deserve and we don't like it when people get what they don't deserve. That's just how life is. Like Cinderella. Oh, man. <laughs> like Cinderella. Wow. Wait, the Brandy Cinderella or the Hillary Duff you know, Cinderella? I grew up, yeah, I, I watched <laughs> the Brandy. Brandy was pretty good. I mean, you got this, you know, beautiful girl. Dad passed away, so she's with her stepmom and stepsisters. And, you know, they got her cleaning up the house, doing mm. chores, you know, doing some nasty things that some of us, you know, don't want to do, like, you know, cleaning room or washing some dishes. I'm back on that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, she was doing everything right and she was still mistreated. You know, she got a fairy godmother who can grant her whatever she wants. She mm -hmm. met, you know, Prince Charming, but somehow, some way, life was still giving her the end of the stick. But she, I mean, eventually found some fairness mm -hmm. in that situation. So, with that being said, remember, simply put it, we like it when people get what they deserve and what they don't get what they do get when they don't deserve. And sometimes, the only problem is that if we want God to be fair with everyone, we may not like what fairness really looks like. Mm. So, um, as silly as the story of Cinderella may be, some people feel like it's just a fairy tale or whatnot, we sometimes really approach life like that, as if there are two sides battling it out. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fair side, and there's an unfair side. <laughs> kind of just black and white here. Um, so like, for instance, when someone cheats on a test or on a project mm -hmm. and um, they make an A and don't get caught, you, <laughs> 
that may seem like it's unfair, you know? Um, and it does happen a lot, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and then, or there's other times where uh, one of your friends may not get busted, but then you get two weeks without your cell phone. You know, it may seem like it's unfair. There's always the two kind of like battling it out. But simply put, when we like, we like it when people get what they deserve. Um, and we don't like it, like you said, when they don't get what they deserve. Uh, and sometimes we even attach the same fairness to the idea of who God is and what he decides to allow to happen in our world today. The only problem is if we want God to be fair with everyone, we may not like what his fairness really looks like. Mm -hmm. So let's think about some things that um, Jesus has already said, and let's kind of dive a little deeper into that story that we have already kind of talked about. As we mentioned before, um, Jesus had 12 disciples, and so his disciples squad. or his apostles <laughs> or his squad, um, <laughs> they basically spent a lot of time together, mm -hmm. um, going to different areas, like kind of like our, they maybe traveled to like our Eatonville and our Maiden and our Winter Park, and well, for Jesus it was like Galilee and Samaria and the different areas around there. They hung a lot around a lot, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and they ate meals together and they spent a lot of time together. And so you would kind of almost assume if these people are hanging out with Jesus, then they're all model citizens, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. not the case. Not, not um, like so they, they had their issues. Like we all have our issues. Like the first example, Peter. Ooh. Peter was very close to Jesus. Best friends. Yeah. Um, but there's obviously a lot of examples where he would talk without thinking, mm -hmm. say stuff out of the like side of his mouth, mm -hmm. make bad decisions about what he was thinking, mm -hmm. jump into situations without thinking. Um, and so he had a lot to say a lot of times and Jesus had to kind of, you know, give his little uh, input. Input Sounds about like what <laughs> Peter was <laughs> doing. Peter sound like me. <laughs> yeah. Even, um, and we're gonna talk about one of the times where Peter really kind of made a different decision that Jesus would have not approved of. Um, and one of these times was right before Jesus was arrested. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jesus basically told the disciples that once he was arrested, that they didn't have anything to fear, that he would never abandon them. Um, and so when he had told them that is where we're going to go to our scripture today. So if you have your Bible app or your actual hard copy Bible, let's turn to Matthew. Matthew, the 26th chapter. I'll give you a minute to flip there. Matthew 26. <laughs> that's flipping now. That's not, <laughs> that's not making it rain. That's flipping your, your Bible. Make sure you don't flip, get it. Flip them pages, y'all. Right, flip them pages. Matthew uh, chapter 26, verse 33. We're going to start there. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And it says this. Peter declared, even if everyone deserts you, I will never desert you. That was Peter. He was saying that. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. This very night, before the rooster, cr the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. So in this verse, Jesus is saying like, hey man, you're gonna... You're gonna turn me down. Yeah. You're gonna, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna say you don't know me. You never met me. We don't know each other. We don't commute. Right. You gonna do me like that, bro? And, G and Peter said, <laughs> no. Matter of fact, it, didn't, it doesn't even say Peter said no. It said Peter insisted. Like, he was hard down, like, no, no man, no. you my dude. Like, we, like, forever for life, ride or die. Like, mm -hmm. all of that. Skirt. Right. <laughs> um, and so that was possibly the boldest thing Peter ever said. Um, and, he, and he said it to Jesus, to his face. Um, and then just after, hours later, Jesus was arrested. And Peter did exactly what Jesus said. Um, he was questioned by a group of people about his association with Jesus. Peter came that he had never, ever even knew Jesus at all. Mm -hmm. He was like, I don't know this dude. I've never been with this dude. Never even know. though he was one of the few that went to the Garden of Gethsemane with him that night to pray. I've never, I've never completely, seen this in my life. Right, never. right, never. right, <laughs> right. Like amnesia, complete amnesia of the Crazy. whole. And Peter was probably with him close to three years. Mm -hmm. Three years of eating almost every meal with him. Three years of traveling to different places mm -hmm. with him. His three, mom, his right, dad, his right, cousins. right, right. Jesus had healed his mother-in-law. Like they were tight. They mm -hmm. were really tight. And when it came to it, at a hard time, 
like Peter at it as though he didn't even know him. Um, and so that was like a huge betrayal. And if you kind of picture yourself in, in Peter's shoes for a second, um, have you ever been caught like betraying a friend or talking bad about them? Think about it. Like, have you ever been caught? That's that. Uh, that's embarrassing. I I couldn't even imagine being in that position. Right. Just so like, you never just talking, done that? You talking junk and your friend pop up. I mean, I probably did it. I probably did it behind my like brother or sister. Oh. You know, because yeah. you know, especially being stuck in the house with them. Yeah. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> right? Why they're downstairs or why they're yeah. in their room? Or yeah. Mm. Like, mm, or your parents man. come home and be like, who's supposed to, uh, who did that? Who broke that? And yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sell out. But anyway, um, remember how awful it, it felt though when you betrayed somebody that you knew or somebody that you were supposed to have their back? Um, I guess that's how Peter probably felt. Mm -hmm. um, he swore he would have Jesus' back, and instead he turned his back on his friend. Yeah. Jesus and Peter were friends. Mm -hmm. um, so the fair response from Jesus would probably be like anger, mm -hmm. judgment, oh. yep. lightning bolt maybe. Don't <laughs> Just talk to me. take him out. You know, like this was God and man. There's so many different things Jesus could have did. Yeah. He could have like snapped his finger like. Go um, be gone, Peter. Um, no, like Thanos. <laughs> oh, the six rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Peter could have been gone. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny. But he yeah, didn't. He, but he didn't. He didn't you treat know? him. He didn't treat him like that at all. He showed Peter love, even though he still told Peter he was going to act like you don't know me. Right. And the Bible actually talks a lot about this. So let's go to John. So flip over to John chapter twenty-one. Mm -hmm. John twenty-one. John is in the New Testament. It's a few books down from Matthew, where we just were. John chapter 21, verse 15. And John. here, I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. Got it. Got it on my phone, John. <laughs> so it says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter. Now, I know that was like maybe, what, six words or whatever? Mm -hmm. But this is important. Because this was after Jesus resurrected, mm -hmm. right? This is after he came back to life. So... Peter denied him. Jesus was already arrested at that time. Mm -hmm. They kept Jesus. They crucified Jesus. Three days later, he rose again. And here they were. They were sitting and eating. Jesus appeared to a lot of different people before, when he was resurrected. And these were his group of 12, again, that he appeared for. So it says, while they were when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter. So Simon Peter was still there. Like he knew he had just like sold out Jesus, but he still came to me and eat dinner with this dude. Like who does that? Like, right? And Jesus wasn't just like, er, you can't come in here. Nice. Like, no, not you. Like, get out. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he didn't that. Yeah, none of that. The Bible says nothing like that. He didn't like ask him 50 questions of like, why you sold me out? Why you did me like that? Mm -hmm. He sat down at a table and he ate with him. It's almost like inviting him out to eat for dinner and paying the bill, basically, for this guy that betrayed you. Yeah. You know? So. Couldn't do that. Couldn't do it, not me. And nope. a lot of us feel that same way. It's really hard when somebody betray you. Yeah. Chuck the deuces. <laughs> like, <laughs> you going to cut them off? I'm cutting you I'm off. Chuck, I'm chucking the deuces. I'm going to let you know, like, deuces, I'm out. Like, go deuces. find a new best friend. Like, deuces. I'm good. You good. I'm better alone. You know, I can do bad by myself. Exactly. And that's what a lot of us do. But Jesus yeah. didn't do that to Peter. Nope. And really... That would have been what we considered a fair thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to look at what's fair and unfair, it was fair of Jesus to be able to say, you betrayed me. You sold me out. When I needed you, you weren't there. Ooh. So guess what? Don't come into my house and try to eat my food, <laughs> sitting around my table, washing my cable. Okay. You know, don't do any of that. There's no dessert. There's no chicken. There's no Kool-Aid for you. <laughs> Nothing, right? That would have been a fair thing to do. But Jesus didn't. And it really unfolds a different way. So let's continue to read. So I'm still in John chapter 21, mm -hmm. um, in verse 15, it says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. 
The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt. How are you going to be hurt? And you, but anyway, Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now on the surface, this is a weird conversation, right? But Jesus wasn't talking about like his pet sheep, his favorite sheep. If you remember, a lot of times when Jesus spoke, he talked about him being a good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so what he was saying was, not only are we good, man, I squashed that. We good. We all right. Nothing, not nothing only, different. <laughs> nothing different, right? I not still only, feel the same way. Right, you right. Know, not I love only, you. That's, right. what I, that's how Jesus is. But not only was it love for his boy, yeah. but he also said he trusted Peter enough to do something for him. So he was like, not only do I love you still, but also here's what I want you to do. I want you to take care of my people. Cause that's who Jesus was saying was the sheep. Cause Jesus is the good shepherd. So the good shepherd has sheep. So he was saying, all right, since you said you love me and I believe you, I believe you got some love for me. You wouldn't even came to my dinner. You'd have been so like ashamed of what you did that you would have like not even come. Judas, after he betrayed Jesus was so ashamed of what he did. He took his own life. Peter didn't. Peter still came back to Jesus and ate with him. And Jesus was able to not only forgive him, show him forgiveness, but even love him enough and trust him enough to do something for him. And so he said, not only are we good, but I want you to go out and I want you to represent me in the world. Mm, I like that. Now listen here, guys. Just because we follow Jesus does not mean we're not going to mess up. Mm -hmm. And when we do, we usually have the tendency to be like, all right, we messed up. There's no way he's gonna love me. There's no way I'm a real, I'm a true child of God. There's no way I'm a good Christian. I mean, like, I'm just, he's gonna, he, he's not gonna accept me because I just did something that I know he's not gonna like. Mm. And with stuff like that, we stop coming to church. We stop speaking in small groups. We stop volunteering. We stop serving. We stop participating in worship time. We even start sharing stuff on Instagram about Christ and our relationship with him. Yeah, those daily scriptures, you stop being, reposting those daily yeah. scriptures. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying stop. I'm not saying, you know, we're, we're not gonna feel bad. That's understandable, we're human. But God has more in mind for you and for me mm -hmm. than what we deserve. God's grace is always and forever going to be unfairly good, you know? So what? here's, his, here's what you're gonna have to do, y'all. Mm -hmm. Accept his grace is unfair, just accept it. It won't feel right, I know. You'll feel like you have to perform well, memorize the Bible, read some scripture, pray a little bit more, mm -hmm. pray a little bit harder, pray a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you feel like you're just gonna have to do some, some, some things that's really just gonna grab his attention. But to be honest, he's still gonna love you no matter what. God loves us no matter what. And that's why he sent his only son. You think if I'm gonna send my only son for you mm -hmm. and you mess up, I'm just gonna cash you away? Mm -hmm. Nah, it don't work that way. It it's don't. not over yet. It, it don't work that yeah. way. I'm gonna love you no matter. Just accept the fact that he, he is unfairly good to us. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Attend unfairly good grace to others. Extend it. Right. Extend. Extend the good grace to others. You and I can demonstrate of God's unfairly good grace by, instead of talking about others, talk to them. Instead of leaving them out, we can invite them in. Instead of reminding them how they messed up, we can remind them that we have all fallen short of the glory of God and standards, but, it is, but he is still gracious to us and we can still invite them no matter what, because guess what? Just like how Paul denied Jesus, he did his little, uh, I don't know him, I never knew him, never talked to him, and Jesus still came to him with open arms, still showed him some love, still said like, hey, listen, I know you still did what I said you were gonna do, but I still love you, and I still need you to do this for me and preach the gospel and share my love, share that unfair love, and that's how good God is to us. Right, not only Paul, but also Peter. Mm -hmm. Like, so Peter in our story and Paul, Paul had actually crucified Christians before he got to know who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus appeared to him, and he, you know, showed him a better way and so it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that you won't have consequences for your sins, so the things that you've done that you felt like have separated you from God, because you will, sin has consequences. That's just a fact of life. It does. But what we're saying here is to come close to God, just like Peter came close to Jesus, and know that what God will extend to you is what we call grace. Exactly. And it's unfair grace. Unfair you grace. You don't deserve it because you have done something wrong, 
but it's there for you mm -hmm. and God provides it each and every time. So his spirit is meant to live within us, to help us and lead us, to guide us, mm -hmm. to not do those things again, to not think that same way, to not act out that same way, to not talk that same way again. So yeah, number one, accept that his grace is unfair. There are some unfair things in life that are good. And mm -hmm. this is one of them. His grace is unfair. It's not what we deserve. Um, so accept that. And then to extend unfair grace to others. There's someone else that needs your forgiveness uh, for what they've done to Spread you. Spread that Jesus love. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he gave it to you so you can, like, always give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. That's what we're called to do. So I want you to, we're going to kind of close this up and um, wrap this up for this week. But I want you to think about how you normally um, imagine Jesus when you've done something bad. Yeah. How like, do you think, do you think Jesus, he's about to treat you? Right. He's going to treat you. Right. Ugh. Think about that. Do you think uh, there's disappointment? Yeah. Do you think there's abandonment? Yeah. Um, now, instead of that, imagine that he invites you for breakfast. Ooh, okay. Wherever you want to eat. Kiki's, IHOP, First Watch. That's <laughs> actually good. Perkins. Is it is Josie? Can... Josie's? Really oh good. really? That's yeah. That's a good breakfast place. I can see me and Jesus eating there. Oh, because it starts with a J. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. But just like that, that, that familiar conversation, just like that opportunity to meet with someone who not only invites you to breakfast but pays for it, mm -hmm. right? Imagine that that's how God or Jesus treats you when you have done something um, that didn't deserve that. He wants to be a part of your story. He sits at breakfast with you and he talks with you and he says, "Hey." Like, why'd you, have, why'd you do that? Or, hey, maybe he doesn't even ask you that because Jesus didn't ask Peter, why did you deny me? He already mm -hmm. knew Peter was gonna deny him. Mm -hmm. Just like God already knows everything um, in your life. Yep. He knows the end um, from the beginning and back and forth. So he invites you to be um, a part of his story in someone else's life. Mm -hmm. So it's not even just about you, mm -hmm. right? He shows you this unfair grace so that you can be a part of somebody else's story, show them that same grace. Same grace. So mm -hmm. maybe even think about today who you need to extend that grace to and make a step towards doing that. Whether you can need to text them, email them, call them, send a smoke signal, however, whatever you need to do. May, it might be someone that's in your household that you need it. Your parents. In your house. <laughs> we know that we know they're in the house. Yeah, the, that older sister, that baby sister, Ooh, yeah. the older brother, the younger mm -hmm. brother, it can be any of those. We're all flawed, just like Peter, just like Paul. Yep. But his grace is bigger mm -hmm. than fairness, right? Don't try to figure out who deserves it, who doesn't deserve it, just accept it and show it to others. Amen. So remember God's grace is unfairly good. And we're going to end with prayer today. Would you like to pray today? Oh, yeah, I like to pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray with us. Y'all yeah, bow your heads, close your eyes. Uh, Father God, your unfairly grace is all that we need, Father God, and all that we cherish. We thank you for giving it to us, even when we feel like we don't deserve any of your love any of your presence, any of your patience, Father God, any, any of it at all. We thank you for who you are and who you continue to show us who we are, Father God. And I just pray that someday, some, some way, Father God, we can be like your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, and love others as he loves us, as you love us, Father God. I pray, like I said, that we continue just to grow better, be better, Father God, and to love the way your son loves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, we love y'all. Until we meet again. Bye, guys. <laughs>
Also remember that version, the Bible app, has a plan, a reading plan, with this particular series. So this series is Famous Last Words. Mm -hmm. So you can search Famous Last Words, and there'll be a Bible reading plan just for you that can follow along with what we've been teaching. So you can definitely stay connected in the midst of watching all those other Netflix movies mm -hmm. or Pure Flix. That's also a really good streaming service definitely if you haven't heard about it. Pure mm -hmm. Flix, awesome movies there also. Stay connected, y'all. We love you.